Hello, my name is Andrea. Welcome to Chapter 7. In this lesson, we're going to talk about prevention of disease by screening and immunization. This lesson is divided into three parts. In Part 1, we'll introduce screening. In Part 2, we'll mention some common screening tests. Finally, in part three, we'll talk about immunization for travelers. Let's get started. We'll begin with part one, screening. Screening is a way of identifying people at increased or greater risk for a condition, although they do not yet have any signs or symptoms. In some cases, mass screening, screening large numbers of people, is appropriate. For example, in the past for tuberculosis. In other cases, only those with high risk factors like a family history of conditions such as cancer and diabetes are screened. However, there are a number of problems with screening. There are always false negatives cases where a patient has a disease but screening does not identify it. There are also false positives where someone is told they have a disease when in fact they do not. Furthermore, with some diseases, early identification is of no benefit to the patient as there is no treatment available. Now we'll see part two, common screening tests. Here, we'll talk about the most commonly done tests. To test for neutral tube defects and Down syndrome risk in developing fetuses, the AFP alpha fetoprotein test is done to pregnant women. It is done every 16 or 17 weeks throughout pregnancy. To screen for breast cancer, a mammography is done. This test is applied to women between the ages of 50 and 70. This test should be done every three years. To test for cervical cancer, a smear test is done to women between the ages of 20 and 60. It's recommended to have this test done once a year. To screen for cardiovascular disease, doctors apply a blood cholesterol test. The subjects are usually people over 40 with a high risk of the disease. This screening should be done once a year. Doctors also take measures for secondary prevention of some already present illnesses. To screen for high cholesterol, a blood cholesterol test is done. This should be applied to patients with heart disease every six months. To screen for diabetic retinopathy, an ophthalmoscopy must be done. This is applied to patients with diabetes every year. Now, let's move on to part three, immunization for travelers. Traveling can make someone susceptible to an illness. The following vaccinations are recommended for travelers to South Asia. Hepatitis A or immune globulin, Ig. Transmission of hepatitis A virus can occur through direct person-to-person -person contact, through exposure to contaminated water, ice, or shellfish harvested in contaminated water, or from uncooked fruits, vegetables, or other foods. Hepatitis B. Transmission is possible, especially if you might be exposed to blood or body fluids. For example, healthcare workers have sexual contact with the local population or are exposed through medical treatment. Japanese encephalitis. Get immunization if you plan to visit rural farming areas and under special circumstances such as a known outbreak of Japanese encephalitis. Malaria. 
Your risk of malaria may be high in these countries, including cities. Travelers should take an effective anti-malarial drug. Rabies. This is possible if you have extensive unprotected outdoor exposure in rural areas. Typhoid. Typhoid fever can be contracted through contaminated drinking water or food. Large outbreaks are most often related to fecal contamination of water supplies or foods sold by street vendors. Vaccination is particularly important because of the presence of S. typhi strains resistant to multiple antibiotics in this region. As needed, it's recommended to get booster doses for tetanus, diphtheria, and measles, and one-time dose of polio for adults. That's the end of today's lesson. I hope you found this class informative. See you in the next lesson.